Good evening and welcome to the Policy Subcommittee of the Brockton School Committee for Tuesday, May 25th. First, a little housekeeping. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency on March 12th, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 20, pursuant to that order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the meetings, I'm sorry, from the open meeting laws requirement that meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast channel, and 1071 HD version. The public can access this meeting via the following link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. Okay, let us call the roll to establish a quorum. All right, D'Agostino is here. Ms. Asac. Here. Mrs. Mendez. Here. Mr. Minicello. Here. Mr. Rodriguez. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Here. Mr. Sullivan. Here. Okay. And uh, the mayor was with us earlier this evening, uh, the start of the evening where we had building naming, but um, had to uh, attend another meeting as well this evening. And so um, he just asked that I, you know, let everybody know he was, <laughs> He was here and, and uh, um, again, just had a, another engagement that he had to get to. And, you know, of course, with that job, you're always trying to be in five places at the same time. So um, <clears throat> we do appreciate his, his efforts to be everywhere. Um, on tonight's agenda for policy, we have a review of the district calendar, um, the topic of uh, uh, trimesters versus some um, terms, and then uh, any other business that needs to come before policy. So on the calendar item. Um, make a motion if I could to take item two out of order. And do it okay. The trimester. Okay. Um, so there's a motion on the floor to take item two out of order. Second. Seconded by Ms. Asac. Motion by Mr. Sullivan. I'll call the roll. As soon as I find it. Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> My pages stuck together. All right. D'Agostino is a yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. So uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Okay. Motion carries. Item number two, trimesters. I believe Ethan will be leading our discussion on that. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, so this is um, the assessment team has been working uh, on looking at trimesters, um, and this is only for um, uh, pre-K to eight. This is would not be for um, for nine to twelve high school. Um, so we spoke about this. Uh, I think it was about a month or two ago. Um, in the meantime, we've done a survey, and, and just to be clear, uh, the trimesters, uh, and we'll. Dr. Cancel will uh, talk about the benefits of it, but this um, this would not make any change to the report card. Uh, obviously, it's much too early um, and late in the game to make a change to the report card for next year, but um, we would then recommend a task force to um, work next year of um, school committee members, um, school staff, administrators, parents, and, um, and probably some students to really look at report cards across the district and you know, put a task force to make recommendations to the school committee for changes to report cards, but that's not something that would be put with this. Um, obviously, the report cards would go out at different times with trimesters, but we would not change um, the content of report cards with this, because a lot of places would do that, but we wouldn't do that this late. Dr. Cancel, go ahead. All right, so as, uh the superintendent said, 
the assessment team we presented to you and um, in the full school committee and we realized that it would be a very good idea if we had um, surveyed the teachers. So we decided we would survey the teachers so we could be better informed and to help you um, with this sort of decision. So the first question we asked, we wanted to get a sense. You'll see the survey is put together in a consistent manner. The first question is how important is this uh, to you? So if we were to go to trimesters, how important is this? We were uh, rather surprised that 61, almost 62% of the uh, teachers surveyed who responded, 270 people responded. It was very important to them. For 31%, it was moderately important, and it's, it's only not important to 7%. So it was clearly an important issue. The next important question we asked was the big question, would you like to change? So we're at sem semesters going to tri trimesters, and 83% said, yep, let's do it. 24%, I'm sorry, 9% said no thank you, and 9% um, had no preference. So overwhelmingly, if you add the no preference and yes together, overwhelmingly uh, there was a sentiment among the respondents to, um, to go to trimesters. It turns out I added this little uh, graphic. Of the people who said yes, 95% of them wanted that change made this fall. We specifically asked everybody, when would you like it to take place? And 84% said we would like it to take place this fall. And 16% said no, thank you. So the difference between this number and the 95%, the this is for everyone. And the 95% were only the people who wanted to make the change. And then this just, um, we added this question because the middle school their survey was really easy. Their survey was done after this. The elementary school, because they have standards-based report cards, we wanted to get a sense of um, their sentiment about the standards-based report cards. So we added that. So you just see that more elementary school than middle school uh, teachers responded. So that's really important because this is coming up. It's about, um, it's a substantial change, as the superintendent said, and it's not one that we can just turn on the a diamond do it has to be thoughtful but this will help inform us so we propose to reduce the number of standards in our report card how important is that to you well 81% say it's important 15% say moderately important and very few uh, about about 4% said it's not important so then just like the other time we asked the question directly, and 93% would like us to reduce the number of standards on the report card. The standards right now go into great detail, and it really gets into things that are helpful perhaps to teachers, but not as helpful to parents. And um, at the end of the day, parents are um, left at times saying, okay, so how'd my kid do? All right. If the number of standards on the report card would reduce, uh, were, were reduced, would you like to see it win? I didn't read that well at all. Sorry about that. Bottom line is everyone wants it done this year. Get it done soon. Um, that may not happen, but that's, you know, that's just their sentiment. We propose to add summary letter grades to our report card for major subjects. Now this is a, a very large change because right now there aren't summary grades. A summary grade is an A, a B, or a C, D, whatever. So a third of the people say this is very important. A little more than a third say it's moderately important. And almost a quarter, almost exactly a quarter say it's not important to add a grade. So that's interesting. In terms of would you like to add a summary letter grade to major subjects, 53% of the respondents said yes. Now, that doesn't sound like a resounding win, 
but if you consider that 16% said, no, don't do it, that means that there's 31% of the no preference folks. And if you add the no preference to the 53, it becomes substantial. I would, <clears throat> I would analyze this by, if you're not saying you don't want it, you're okay with it. Either you support it or you're okay with it. So it seems to me that there's actually m more than this 53% uh, in favor. You're not going to have Except for this group, 16%, you're not going to have many people um, who are going to say this is a terrible idea. Interestingly enough, I think this is a, a very large change. And um, you see there wasn't this overwhelming support. But when you asked when, when would you like it done, people seem to want it done now. And I think that. Um, my guess is the people who didn't want it, they don't want to see it in the fall. And there were probably a couple other people. So that now we wanted to find out about if we do shift or if we stay, what do you think about adding progress reports to elementary report cards? And the progress re report that we shared with them, we do not have, this would have to be bargained, but um, we do not have an actual model, but we, we had a, a template, which would be very simple. It would just be, you know, you're achieving the standard, the grade level standard, you're working towards it. Or, you know, words to that effect. It, it's just very easy. It doesn't take long to fill out. It's information for the, the parent to say, oh, Ethan seems to be struggling a little in his science. I'm going to have to talk to his teacher about that when we have our conferences. So 46% um, said, yep, please. 25% said, no, thank you. And about a third, 29% don't have a strong preference. So again, if you, if you just look at 25% as the, the hard no, you see that there's considerable um, support for progress reports. And then finally, we had um, some very nice responses that people gave us, but I don't know if you have any questions about the um, survey, but those are the findings. June, can you um, join us so we can just, um, again, we want to focus on trimesters. Um, Ethan, if you can fill them in on, I know that um, Heather was with us, but if you yep. can refresh sure. everybody's memory of what okay. was shared and what the work wor came out, and June will join you as far as what yep. came out of the, you can actually sit in Mr. Sullivan's seat. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> just to go over what came out, the update them on uh, with uh, Heather Ronan presented about yep. um, trimesters, and obviously June has spent time um, on um, looking into research and trimesters as well, and we've had some schools that used to have trimesters, so. Right, so just uh, to recap, the assessment team, uh, you know, Mike told us one of the things we should look at this year would be uh, the report card and grading and uh, trimesters, semesters, what, what are other districts doing. So we went out and we took a look. And um, I will say right now and right here, it's not a silver bullet. It's not going to cure all your woes. It is, however, um, there are some favorable features to it. And so when we looked around to the various uh, other districts, the other urbans that looked like us, a number of them have trimesters. So that was important. You know, we looked at the big Springfield, Worcester, places like that, Boston, the, the regular districts we look at to compare ourselves to. And one of the reasons for that, and June will be able to talk about this especially, but with the little I, little kids, with the elementary school students. If you're on semesters, you have a 45-day marking period, and then the term ends. And so in the beginning of the year, you're learning things like routines, I think. <laughs> you know, I used to visit the Huntington. But all of a sudden, you're having a grade that's due. And it's a standard space grade, and it's not like we do in high school 
you know, you don't just average up all the grades. It's whenever you achieve it, you achieve it. And so one of the things that people on the assessment team brought up, it, it gives the trimesters give more time. And I just want to make sure that no, and that's exactly what I would have said to support the move to trimesters because one of the things that we definitely recognize, especially early on in the year, is that when our students start school, yes, a great deal, regardless of the level we're at, as I look at a high school teacher, we're spending a lot of time at the beginning of the year setting routines and expectations and really clarifying for kids what we're expecting from them. And so teachers are spending time getting to know kids, and then all of a sudden it's November, and we're giving them their first grades of, of the term. And so what we've heard from teachers and from our some of our parents is that they're not sure that a teacher may have had enough time to get to know kids. And when you think about that at the middle school level, it's even less so because at the elementary level, for the most part, teachers are spending an entire day with kids. And at the middle school level, they might, they'll have them for a period or two a day. And so it takes even longer to really be able to assess how students are doing. And I think one of the positives of adding the progress notices to the process is it allows for that check-in without the um, high degree of accountability, but there's accountability. And so it gives families, again, at, particularly at the elementary level, more touch points to really be able to monitor the progress of their children. And so we've talked a lot about that specifically as being one of the real positives about moving to um, uh, one of the reasons that we'd move to trimesters. And at the same time, Dr. Cancel talked about report cards and grading, and the superintendent talked about us sort of slowing down on that a bit because something that we all recognize is that report cards are important to people, they're important to teachers, they're important to kids, they're important to families, and we wanna make sure that we're looking at our grading policies and processes really extensively before we move to doing something that really does have impact on the entire school community. And so one of the things we talked about in E-Team today is even looking at what the, con the way we grade conduct and you know where does that play a role in our district's um, attempt to really be looking more deeply at inclusive anti-racist practice and how do our grading policies sort of reflect our commitment to that work. And so we know it's a year-long process, and that's why we really didn't want to move so fast on changing the actual grading policies. But the report card trimesters, that's less, I mean, it's still a, a major change for sure. It changes, it would change the way that we would schedule our parent conferences. Um, so we would have to do some, you know, real, I think, um, strategic planning around when we are releasing those report cards and where do the conferences fit in? Where does it make the most sense? So, thank you, Jen. So, one of, uh, I believe Barbara Lovell is here. Can I, can I tell if she's logged in? Hi, Ethan, can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Yes, so, Barbara, if I will, put this wherever the speaker is. If you could, if you could let us know what uh, you found when you were the principal of a school that was running trimesters, um, what right. some of the benefits were. So we did have trimesters at the Asheville um, for about, uh, I think it was about eight, eight or nine years, um, and it worked really well for us. Um, some of the benefits were that with specialists, um, the students were allowed um, to have more dedicated time as they were able to have some of their specialists just for one trimester, but two days in a row, which allowed them to complete, you know, art projects and um, work on health lessons and music lessons where they got two days together. Um, it really helped us. They had gym all year long. They had an academic strategies all year long, and then they were able to have um, one trimester each of art of music and of health and that really helped the teachers so the art teacher wasn't seeing 500 students in a week they were only seeing perhaps a third of the a third of the school at a time which made um, their lives so much more manageable um, the specialists uh, especially really really uh, benefited from having 
uh, students two days in a row. They were able to focus their lessons. Students were able to complete more work because it wasn't five or six days before they had the class again. And so that was just one of the benefits. Um, I think the other thing that the teachers um, and parents really liked was the fact that um, there was, like I think June just spoke to, there was a lot more time for um, the teachers to get to know the students. There was time for the students to um, do makeup work. Uh, parent conferences often felt uh, fell sort of in the middle of the trimester, which allowed the um, parent and teacher to meet and to talk about what that student needed to do in order to be successful, especially if they were in danger of failing. Um, and it really helped the kids to have a lot more time to focus on what their needs really were in order to be successful. So I think, you know, the, the grading um, was a big was a big part. It, re, of course, reduced some of the um, workload on the teachers as well. But um, the overall uh, accountability for kids was was there. Um, it also allowed for plenty of time for credit recovery so that if students had um, failed uh, the first term, the first trimester or the second trimester, they were given credit recovery work to do in that next trimester and had plenty of time to really make those changes and bring their grades up from the term before if that, if that case had had, you know, if that had happened, that they had failed. So I think that those, both of those, all of those pieces of information were important um, in us really loving trimesters. And when we did have to change um, to go to the quarters, which we've done for about two years now, um, people have noticed that it is a, it is a big difference. Um, it seems like as soon as you're there for three and a half weeks, you just get to know the kids and you have to start writing progress notes for them. And then it's another, you know, three and a half, four weeks and, you know, the report cards do, and then you, you know, you're getting right into doing um, progress notes again for the next term. So it, it was, um, it's very rushed and, um, it seems like there's not much time, you know, the parents are saying, oh, your child is in danger of failing or they're, they're um, failing. And then just three weeks later, the report card comes out and there's really not a lot of time for the kids to make those um, adaptations and changes in their um, behaviors and in their, you know, uh, work ethic and so forth in order to get their grades up. Thank you. So, you know, the, the one thing that um, I try to pride myself on is to give a fair and balanced view of an issue. And um, the thing about trimesters and semesters, I definitely heard what Barbara was talking about on assessment team. Now, Barbara's not on assessment team, but we reached out to uh, the principals that uh, used to use trimesters. And the flip side to having more time is if you don't do well in a term, you have fewer terms. You know, you only have two other grades that are going to offset the first one. But again, in a standard space report card for elementary, that's a very different, because you're just waiting until the child shows mastery. When they show mastery, they've shown mastery. It doesn't matter if they failed every day up until that point they now have achieved mastery. So there, there are some differences, and I can definitely see why um, so many of the elementary folks supported it. And there certainly are many examples of middle schools that enjoy it. I just want to make sure that everyone um, hears. There, there is another side to it, but overwhelmingly, the side that Barbara was talking about was the side, and, and she's obviously a middle school principal, that was the side we were hearing the most. All right. Um, was that? I don't want to interrupt you. Okay. All right. So I know I have a few things. I'm sure the other members of the committee have some questions and comment on this too. So before I even get into my own questions from what I've seen here, I will share that when this was just mentioned during our last full committee meeting, by the end of that meeting, I had an email from a teacher that said, it is not the rosy picture that that we're being told it is. So um, I know that teacher may be in the minority, uh, clearly, be based on your survey results, or maybe many of them didn't bother to answer, which, again, if you don't answer, you don't get heard. Um, but 
There have to be more cons to this. I just, I, you know, I can say I don't think that, because this is a big deal, right? That this is not, you know, how many snow days in the calendar. This is a pretty big deal. Um, you know, for me personally, I, I don't know that I would be ready to make any kind of decision on this tonight, having first just seen this information. I'd like to have a chance for the public who's watching this have an opportunity to, to reach out, and I'd like to encourage anybody who is teacher or parent, pro or against, to make your feelings on this known to the committee, to your committee member. Um, I get, so let me ask, the, I guess, run this for me. Right now, we have four semesters. How many progress reports are in that schedule of semesters? How often are the progress reports in there? Zero. Zero. That's, we, we do have progress notices. We're talking K-8, and our middle school teachers okay. do absolutely issue progress reports, and some at the elementary level as well. Okay. So it sounds like maybe at the elementary level it might be more of an as-needed case-by-case and... Uh, that's exactly the way it is. It's on an as-needed basis. Middle school, it's pretty regular? Yeah, middle school, it's actually part of what uh, is in the contract. Again, this, okay. any change to progress notices has to be negotiated. Right. Right now, there's no formal this. process in the contract for <clears throat> elementary. Um, middle school and high school, there is. Right. Yep. Okay. All right, I just want to make sure I have a clear picture, both as a committee member and as a parent, um, you know, but it, and if we went to trimesters, how frequent would the, what would change about the progress notices again? That would, that would be part of the discussion that the superintendent and school committee would have with the BEA. So that would actually be, have to be bargained and that would be so language we that we would need to include. It may not change, it might, policy change to trimesters, then we would have to bargain the impact with the BEA. Right, we'd have to impact bargain whether there were going to be progress reports built in more frequently or yep, exactly. stay the same that they are now. Okay, all yep. right, so we don't know that. Because here's, and that gets to my concern about this, is, you know, again, a con to this, right, if there's less marking periods, each one is weighted heavier, you know versus if there are four periods, then obviously each one is weighted less. So if I have a really rough first term or semester, you know, I've still got three shots to turn it around. I get the argument that but each one is shorter, so if you're getting halfway through and you're in trouble, your opportunity to turn that term around is less. I, I totally hear that. You know, I, I just, I don't know. Um, and. Do we have any information? You say that there are some other districts that do it. Um, is there a impact improving, or is it pretty much a wash as far as student achievement? Like, I don't know, districts that use this, are they, does it positively impact students and their achievement levels and their results? I mean, that's everything we're doing right now is all about improving our, our student achievement levels. Um, so I'd, I'd want some more information about that. Um, you know, again, I'd need to know if, to be comfortable. I'd need to, I think we'd need to have some discussions with the, the union about frequency of progress reports. I just, you know, um, and then we used to do it at the Ashfield. Why'd we stop? So the reason that we stopped was because what we had were inconsistent grading policies across the district. And so we, we had the pluff, but it was just, it, it, it ended up um, being problematic when kids would transfer schools, there'd be a change in their residence and they'd have to go to a different school and there were different grading policies. So whatever we do, we really need to, you know, I always believe in piloting, but at the end of the day, what we land on, there has to be some consistency when we think about kids who might need to move around. Right. We certainly can't have an eight or nine year pilot, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I mean, those are my initial thoughts and reactions, and maybe I'm way off, but I'll certainly take uh, questions from the and comments from the committee. Um, I saw several hands go up. Joyce, you were the first I saw, so oh, I'll go sure. with you first. So thank you for the presentation. Um, as always, you always provide us with so much information. So uh, like Mr. D'Agostino, I also received an email 
right after that last meeting. But that was the only negative email I received. I've been asking a lot of the teachers um, what they think about this and some of the parents. And the one thing that we always hear is, I wish I knew. I wish I knew before conferences. This gives the parents and the families and the student an opportunity before they get to that conference to, if there's a red flag, reach out to the parents to let them know. They would know. And that's where the positive, I think, with this is, you know, I ran into it a few times within the past few years where parents would come up to me and their child would be doing great and then all of a sudden something would happen halfway through and they're like, we wish we knew. So um, I definitely think it's a positive. I've asked a lot of the um, BPS staff. I've, I've ran it by some of the parents. Um, it's, I think it's wonderful because it gives them an opportunity to get an update prior to getting closer to the end of, you know, prior to um, conference time. So halfway through, they know if their, their child is not excelling in a certain area and that need, they need extra attention. Um, and I, and I actually, I know I spoke with Dr. Lovell because I knew Ashfield um, had done that and they said it was wonderful, great program. So, um, but you know, like everything else, I'm sure there's questions that, that are gonna come up and it's always good to be well informed. But um, definitely, definitely um, my biggest thing is, is we can catch something early on if, if something's going on with a student and they need extra help, but thank you. Yeah, that, that was the rationale behind the change, actually. It, it, was, it was coming from there, and what can the schools put in place with the parent support to change the trajectory of the student? Um, I did some research, and I had to find it, but, um, or we, I'm sorry, I didn't. We did some research, and I can't answer your question of, you know, the achievement, but I can say of the large academics, the ones that look like us, Springfield, Brockton, and Worcester are semesters for elementary and middle school. New Bedford, Lowell, Boston, Fall River, Holyoke, and Lynn are elementary school trimesters. Uh, middle uh, and high school are semesters. And Lawrence, K through eight, is trimesters. They, their achievement is higher, but I will say this, your achievement will not be determined by trimesters or semesters. Your achievement will be determined by, you know, the, the ability, whoops, to uh, really do a good job with instruction. And so as much as the, the folks, the parents have the time to work with the students, you know, because they know, we think that will be a benefit. That's why uh, we thought trimesters would be good. As you can see from the survey, you didn't get 100% of the people, but it was remarkably consistent, you know, because I was watching the results come in and they stayed the same. You know, it was, there are a couple people who don't want it and the majority of them do want it. And then there's some people who are uh, neither here nor there about it. But, you know, Mike was really uh, clear during our executive team meeting when when you talk about semesters and trimesters that's a doable it's a, it's 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 large but it's a doable event changing the other pieces those are very complicated and he really wants to make sure that we have a a lot of community input on this student input teacher input you know so we really are are trying to separate them out semesters and trimesters that's one issue the uh, grading the report card itself which would include progress reports that's another issue um, I just reread that email that was sent to me and it just um, the one point they did feel is there was too much time between official reports from the time that the progress report came out, that, that they felt the progress report came out too late. Um, I think that's why they, they weren't for it 100%. Um, but like everything, you know, we, we can tweak things. Um, you know, it's, it's trial and error. I mean, we, we try different things and, and that's how we, we're gonna know what's gonna work. Um, but no, I just want, I just double checked the email. So I knew there was a reason behind it but again, 
I reached out to so many and they, they were very positive and, and they loved the idea. And this was staff and parents. Um, okay, are you all set? Okay, all right. Um, so, Mrs. Mendez, I saw your hand up next. Okay. Um, <laughs> no worries. So, I have a few questions. Um, so, from the 270 that responded, are these just teachers that are responding? And what fraction of the population of teachers is this? Do you know? Uh, it's roughly. I would say because it's the elementary and middle schools, I'm going to guess that that's about out of 800 or, or, or fewer. Thank you. So then um, I guess my wonder, similar to Mark, is I would love to get more data on the positive and negatives. Um, but also my huge wonder is we just went through a year of a pandemic, a huge year of changes, like mm -hmm. drastic changes really fast. And according to the data from these 270 teachers, it sounds like they're ready to go on for fall, tw this fall, upcoming fall 2021. But I wonder, does this make sense to do this <clears throat> drastic shift when we just went through a year of so many changes? Um, and when I say that, I'm thinking specifically on students and families that are just adapting to what normal schooling, quote unquote, normal schooling is. Yeah, well. It these are, these are great questions, and I have to say that prior to doing the uh, survey, at first, I never thought of it. I was like, trimesters, semesters, who cares? It's 60 days, 45 days, you know, you'll have more time. It makes a lot of sense. Then I heard, well, you know, there's, there's a big, con it, it sounds good, but maybe it's the wrong time to do it. I'm like, geez, I hadn't thought of it. You're right. It's a pandemic. You know, it's a big deal. And then we gave the survey, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and it, I, I'm not going to lie. That surprised me, that people were okay with trimesters. That doesn't surprise me because, like, I grew up with trimesters. I'm comfortable with it. A lot of people have kids or someone, they know someone who's in trimesters. We had it. It worked well at the Ashfield. They were, you know, one of our highest scoring middle schools. And pluff, you know, coincidence. But um, I was surprised. And at the end of the day, you know, um, the other way to look at that is, I think people just want to get settled and go next year. And like, they don't want one more thing to think about, to change, to, they, they just tell me what to do, I'm gonna have my kids in front of me, let's go. But that's what the numbers say. So that, that's, that's the best I can do. Okay. Because we also have to consider that this number is not even half of the 800 teachers, right? It's a, like, it's a pretty small percentage in comparison. Um, so is it possible to possibly get more data, especially once people continue to have these conversations of trimesters sure. and understanding the data? Absolutely. The other question I had is kind of what Joyce was talking about grading policies um, and how the Ashfield and the... PLUF didn't work because there was inconsistent grading policies throughout the district. Did I understand that correctly? They had trimesters and the others have some, they had semesters. The grading policy they have to follow is the school committee's grading policy, but um, the actual, t the, some, it's like the, all the other middle schools had semesters and those two had trimesters. So, so it didn't really make much sense. Barbara has her hand up. Yes, we uh, we did it. We moved back to being in quarters just to help um, across the board with the uh, infinite campus and the reporting. Um, but we really didn't experience a, a huge difference from kids coming to one. It's only a 15 day uh, change over. Um, and so it wasn't dramatically different. Um, it, the biggest thing, it really helped our scheduling a lot and, and would do a lot for the other school, middle schools with their scheduling, being able to um, maximize specialists, getting more kids into different specials and giving the kids, uh, you know, uh, more exposure to different things. So that was, that was huge in, in our decision to really keep um, the trimesters. Uh, the, other, the other point really was um, that 
being able to talk with the parents before the grades were closed. And like I said, if you're if you're splitting the difference of 15, it, it ended up being a difference of say if halfway through the semester is when the progress notes came out. That's an extra seven days, which is you know it's not a huge amount as far as um, not having uh, the the most up to date report. But it really those seven days really gave those that kids the extra time uh, to bring their grades up um, because when the pro, um, parent conferences were before, instead of being in the middle of the term, they were at the end of the term after the report cards were in the can. They were already finished. And so they didn't have any opportunity before. By having the trimester, there was at least time um, before the, you know, in the middle of the, the term or closer to the um, middle for the kids to still have that opportunity. So the other progress notes, the other um, parent conferences rather, didn't happen until the grades were closed, which is one of the real um, faults um, that we had. Um, and just the, the other thing too, um, you mentioned something about the change. Uh, it almost is also a, a great point to make any changes. I know that for next year, um, we've used this time um, to really refine a lot of the procedures we have at school. Um, we've adopted a lot new, a lot of new things, and we're ready to start the year next year. It's a great turning point, and it, it's almost the perfect opportunity to make a, a change and come back fresh. We've got a lot of students ready to come back into school. There, there are a lot of kids who haven't gotten used to the schools that they were in um, with their procedures anyway. So it's going to be very natural to slide in any, any new changes we're doing. I know a lot of middle schools are rolling out the PBIS um, system for um, behavior and so forth. There's a lot of things that will be happening and it might just roll in perfectly uh, to come back fresh, new, with anything we're going to change, rather than coming back, doing a year, and then making a change down the road. So I, I understand wanting to look into it further, um, but I don't think um, you know it would be too much to introduce this as a change if you do decide to do this for the fall. I think it would work out fine. Thank you. All right. Um. You also had something? Um, I have one more question. So let's say hypothetically we make the change. This is pre-K through 8th. That's what we're looking at right now. So would this be something that we ever look for 9 through 12? I know last time we spoke about this, Superintendent Mike Thomas said because of how college admission works and what they look for, it's not something we're looking at. But when I initially understood the subject of trimester. I've seen trimester, I've heard of trimester in the college level. So then that's why, I don't know if that's something that you guys have thought about or considered because then if we wanted the district to be in the same page, right? If Like from pre-K to eight, all of a sudden, they're going from trimester, now they're going to semesters. Like how are parents making that transition to understand, okay, this is how my kid was graded and all of a sudden, it's this way and I don't have as much parent conferences or students don't have much, as much time, everything that Barbara's saying, like now it's the opposite, being in the high school level and according to data, especially in the ninth grade, we have understood that that's the most difficult transition year and our ninth graders aren't always doing the best because of the big change. No, that's, that, that's a good, good and valid point. Um, I can tell you, although we have, um, we certainly have high school representation on the assessment team. We were pretty clear about the time frame. So this was a planned when we, you know, talked to Mike back in September. This was planned to happen for September of the next, you know, this coming September. And we knew that to change something at the high school level would be much more complicated. And so we definitely want to have the conversation, but it we knew that there's a reason why the high school, there's so many different pieces with college, you know, application due dates and whatever else they have, that in order to change things, it'd be thoughtful. Are there high schools with trimesters? Yes, there are. Some of the best high schools in the country have trimesters, but that, that doesn't matter. You know, the thing is, can we make it work in Brockton? And, um, you know, there's, there's something about 
trimesters that appeals to the uh, elementary level and to try and fit an elementary kid into a high school model may not work and so that's why when I read out the different districts you know honestly we, we'd be very pleased if we had the results that Lynn has and Lynn does it at, at the elementary level a lot of our peers are doing that at the elementary level I can't give you a perfect answer because there's always a trade-off. I wish there was just one perfect answer and it's like, oh, because I, I could see, you know, you have three kids and two are on one schedule and one's on a different one. I could see that being a headache. But I could also say, well, if it doesn't work for my two little ones, I can live with two different schedules. It, great points. I can't, can't give you a better answer. All right. Are we voting on this today, or this is just we're just discussing it? Well, I think that's up to the committee. After everybody's talked, if someone made a motion, but personally, I I, I wouldn't be comfortable with that. But that's up to the rest of the committee to decide. Um, you know, yeah, that's up that's up to you guys. Um, you know, after everybody's had a, uh, we certainly want to continue to make sure everybody has a chance to comment first before we did anything like that. Okay. So. All right, thank you, I'm all set. No problem. Um, Mrs. Sullivan? Okay, um, I like the idea, I don't know if you can hear me. I like the idea of the trimesters because it gives the teachers more time to know the student and what they can do before they have to report on the student's progress on a report card. It gives the student a chance to catch up if they fall behind for all the reasons that were given by Dr. Cancel, June, and um, I believe it's Dr. Lovell. Um, with the four terms, I always thought when my kids were going through it that it was really quick. And before you knew it, you had the, the midterm progress note, before you even knew there was anything wrong. And then you tried to catch your child up and there really wasn't enough time to really bring up the grade. So I always thought it was really too quick and I think Dr. Lovell said that. Um, so it benefits the students and the teacher because it gives the teacher more time to evaluate a student and it gives the students more time to catch up if their grade falls behind or if the parents were busy with something they didn't notice till midterm that really this grade is this low, then it gives them time to catch up and at least make, make better on the grade. Thank you for the presentation. You're welcome. Thank you, Mrs. Sullivan. Anyone else? Mr. Menicello. Well, I guess, I guess the devil is in the details in terms of what the, the trimester would look like in terms of opportunities because, uh, you know, Mr. Diagostino makes a very good point about that, you know, when you're comparing you know, four opportunities uh, for a year in a subject you know, with grades to offset a, you know, a bad semester, a bad, you know, a bad trimester is gonna weigh heavily, more heavily than a bad semester, you know, just by our fractions. <laughs> but um, so, so you really, the devil's gonna be in terms of how, what opportunities you have in that trimester to affect that grade because, because once that, trimester comes if you're doing bad you're really gonna have to work your tail off to get it you know get your um, grade up at the end of the year and you know in especially in middle school I mean it, it just seems like um, it, it would have a sig more significant I guess ramification in middle school um, for placement for high school placement um, um, so in terms of you know standard in the industry you, you, it, it, is it about 50% is it about like what if you're going to say percentage um, i thought you mentioned that boston does it this way but cynthia it doesn't seem like you're familiar with boston doing trimesters no i think ethan was talking about specific schools was it cuz boston's in each district oh okay so yeah. so, so is the boston public schools generally speaking semester or trimester i thought and i could be wrong 
But didn't, didn't you say Boston, Ethan? I, I did say Boston. And right, I, I don't want to misquote could, you here. No, 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 You're I, on the I, stand I, right now, Ethan. I, I, right? Could be, I could be wrong on this one. <laughs> I was doing under his the cross. impression Stop. that Boston was... Isn't it true that you said <laughs> it's a trimester? Isn't it true? Aim that, that light directly on onto on. Ethan. Turn the light that, on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Make, it, make it, on. it brighter. I'm already feeling sick. This makes me feel better. Um, the, Do you uh, want to repeat that for the record? Yes. The elementaries... The elementary, and yeah. again, Cynthia's right, when you have 135 schools, yeah. and some are pilot schools and some are the other schools that Boston has, maybe, maybe it's different, but I was under the impression middle and high school in Boston were semesters and elementary were trimesters, but if element, some elementaries are trimesters and some are semesters, then that's the way it is. So just for clarification, I teach the high school level, so. I am semesters. Yeah, when we were, when I was in Boston at the high school, it was semesters. But um, in term, as I said, the the research that the assessment team did, semesters, Springfield, Brockton, Worcester, elementary trimesters uh, were New Bedford, Lowell, Boston, Fall River, Holyoke, and Lynn. Trimesters K through eight were Lawrence. So uh, I will say this again. This is not a silver bullet. It, it's, it's really going to depend how good our instruction is, how involved our students are. That's gonna make the difference. This is an opportunity. Well, the, the assessment team thought, based on the research we did, and just you know the experience that the folks bring, that this affords more opportunities for students to make up the work that they have. I agree with you, Mr. Minicello. Well, uh, it, it definitely, if, if you do screw up, it is going to weigh heavier. But we also saw that there are options that some schools do, which is, yes, you have trimesters, but you have a final exam, which counts as a, a whole term. So you end up with four grades. Then they have all these nuances, like if your grades are good, you can waive the uh, you know, exam. But it, you're right, it's in the details. It's, it is a fairly complex issue, but um, you know, that's, that's what we came up with. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you, simply make, if you simply incorporate what you do into a, from, from semester into trimester without any changes, you're definitely making a problem for kids that aren't the best students in the district. If you just take what you do in a, tri in a semester and incorporate it into trimesters without anything different, that's gonna be more problematic for, bad, for students that need help because, because, because a bad term is gonna destroy their, you know, their well, it's not GPA, but their, you know, their grading, so to speak. So I mean, I guess we're gonna to need to see exactly what you're talking about in terms of how many progress reports and how many opportunities to get to improve learning and teaching or effectiveness for, the, for those students in that, in that trimester. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And one of the things that I've said before, elementary school is different. When you're at high school or middle school, you know, you have 20 grades, you average them up, and that's what your grade is. Right. In elementary school, it's standards-based. When you achieve it, you achieve it. As I said, on the, the very last day of the marking period, you achieve mastery, you've achieved mastery. That, that is what your standards-based report is going to say. It's not gonna say, boy, Ethan was really struggling <laughs> you know, all, all year long. It's just gonna say, Ethan made mastery in this standard because I did on the last day. So the more time you have, the, the more information for an elementary school, you, uh, the more information that's relevant to the parent you're gonna get. If, you know, the, the sort of not applicable <laughs> doesn't show up very well in a uh, elementary report card. But, but you're also talking about incorporating a, a letter grade to the, to the um, but that would be area. that would be at a different time. That would be a, a different year. Mike, Mike has said, you know, that the, the things are separated. I should point out that, you know, Cynthia, you raised a really good point. Um, this doesn't have to be K through eight. 
it, it just a, happened that um, you know I asked different principals, and they went, and, and I asked Dr. Murray as well as the, the head of you know the middle schools, among other things, and he seemed to think that the way the schedule works for middle schools, it would be it would be a good idea to go to trimesters, mm -hmm. but there's no you know we don't have to say you must you must do the same K through eight. You could do it the way you want to do it. So can you get us, uh, you know, sort of the, the, the independent data that we can, you know, basically review and, and see how, the, you know, it's beneficial? Um, I mean, what, the, what the, would you like to say? Well, uh, what, what, what um, resources, I guess, are you relying on to go forward with, the, you know, this incorporating of a new policy? You know, what, what, I mean, there's got to be some resources that you're saying that you, I would imagine that, hey, there's, there's some success some places and there must be some, I, you know, this is coming from a certain idea. I mean, I would assume this is coming from in, in other districts around the country, I guess. I mean, I, I guess there has to be something that you're relying on, isn't there, that is showing that you, there's, there's better results in doing this or is this sort of a, uh, a unique? Uh, well, I, th I think it'd be hard to say that the reason Lynn has higher MCAS scores is because they have trimesters. I, I don't think that would be a fair thing to say, but what we could do, I mean, w we, we went to see what people do. We went to see if the literature said anything, and the literature said, don't look for a silver bullet. It, it's, it's what you make of it. We asked people in the district what they thought, and the majority of them, and again, it's the majority, they said that the time was important, the time for parents to be able to, to work with the school, the, the time for the school to work with the student to improve, that was what informed our decision. There really isn't anything out there that's credible that says semesters are better or trimesters are better. Okay. And then we reported on what we found but if you'd like, we could do an exhaustive search. It would take a lot more time, but we could say there are all I, I the just, schools. I thought there was something readily available. I, I'm, no, I mean, okay. I, could, I could write up the. No, 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 I, I, I know how to do uh, But I, I, guess, I guess I'd like to see a, 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 a model of what, you know, what the trimester would look like in terms of all the different opportunities for, how, how many, okay. In a, in a current semester schedule, how many progress report notices are there during one semester? Well, again, right now at the elementary level, it's as needed, so it's not. It's okay, not and, and how, so tell me what a, tr a trimester would look like in that, you know, for the it first trimester. It would have trimester. to be bargained, how many? but what the assessment team has proposed, and again, this is just proposed, it's just recommended to, to the executive team, is at the midway point, of a trimester, you would get a progress report, and that would be um, K through eight. And there's no, and at the midway point in a semester, there isn't a progress report. No, but at the middle school, there is a progress report. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm good. All right, um, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan. I just wanted to say I agree with Cynthia that the timing I think is wrong after coming out of this pandemic year and uh, there's enough changes that, as there is right now without having more changes on top of it. Is there any way that this could be put off for at least sure. a year? <laughs> I mean, the answer is of course. <laughs> <clears throat> it just seems like the wrong time. Yeah, that, again, that's what I thought. And I mean, I really thought that people would feel that way. But when you look at it, it's just overwhelming. Even the people who didn't really want to go to semesters, uh, change from semesters to trimesters. I mean, this is 84%. Like, honestly, when you have 270 people, when do you get results like that? Unless it's like, do you want free money? <laughs> it's it's really unusual to see an 84 percent, and that wasn't that wasn't unique. It was consistent. So it's exactly what I thought. 
it's exactly, I think, what a lot of us thought, and we were surprised. So, so it was a good thing we asked the question. But um, again, I'm presenting this for the assessment team. I'm going to say from, I started it this way and I'm going to end it this way. It's not a silver bullet. It's not going to cure all the woes. If it's something that you all, because you're the policymakers, you don't think it's a wise move, you don't think it's the right time, it's not the right time. It's not going to um, make a radical change. Will it make a gradual improvement? We think so. That's, that's what our research suggested. Can I guarantee that? No. Well, we want guarantees. <laughs> we don't mess around with you know, speculation in this courtroom. <laughs> um, what I was just basically going to say is that. Um, you know you're coming to your trial tonight. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I'm not saying I'm against it. What I'm saying is I'd like to see a mall. OK. Our whole, our whole um, I guess, um, criticism or mind for over the years with regard to the different middle schools, I'm just going to use that as an example, has been no continuity, no uniformity, haphazard here. They do it this way, they do it that way. I would love to see a consistent, let's say that we decided, oh, you know what, we're going to pursue a trimester model. I would like to see a uniform trimester model and what this trimester uh, process is going to look. So, okay, so at, at three weeks or at two and a half weeks, we're going to get a, we're going to do a, um, uh, a summary, a midpoint summary or a, mid, you know, a midpoint progress report. And it, you know, it's going to be the same in each elementary school or each middle school. Hey, we're all going to do this. We're all going to do this. We're going to do this. I'd love to see a model so that I can, and then compare it to what we do in the semester model and have, and whichever one we go with, uniformity throughout the district and the elementaries are going to do it this way and the middle schools are going to do it this way. But I, I, I'd like to see, I'd like to compare and contrast the, the, the semester model to the trimester model and then make an intelligent and reasonable decision. You know what? This makes more sense. The, what I'm hearing is you're, you're right. There needs to be more time. And look at what we're doing in that trimester, different from what we do in a semester model so that I can determine that, yeah, this, this is going to give parents or you know, more opportunity to see what's going on with their child before that ultimate grading period comes. Because like you said, many parents, like actually you know, Ms. Sullivan said quite you know, accurately, you know, all of a sudden uh, the end of a semester is here and the parent's like, oh man, I, you know, it's already here and, the, and I wasn't aware of, that the student, my child, you know, was, was falling behind or this and that. It, it might make all perfect sense, the trimester model, but, but I want to see what it's going to look like and then compare it to what we currently have and then we can make a decision together as, you know what, you're right, this makes a lot more sense than how we were doing it in the past. We're going to create our model, but we need to know what a uniform model is going to, what uniform model is going to be incorporated and what it's going to look like and whether it makes sense. Well, I can, I can absolutely do that and we'll probably use uh, and that's not a criticism. That, that's just, that's just I, I think, you know, these, whoever's been doing this work, and we know who, um, has been doing a great job. I mean, it's, it's great to, to take the initiative to improve. That's a good thing, that we're not just sitting there in a rut and we're going to do it the same old way we always did it, and, and I, I think that innovation is great. You know, we want to we improve things, but I think as a committee, what I'm hearing from many of my colleagues is that we want to know what it's going to look like and, whether, you know, and, and, how, and we want to feel confident that it makes sense. And because there's no like sort of ready, readily available data, like you know the star testing of this or that, and we can say, oh, look at uh, John Safier wrote this, and all these people did that, and it's working here and it's working there. Where we don't have that sort of readily, ready available data, we're going to need to look at the model, the chain, you know, the compare the model we have now and the, compare the new model you're proposing, and and then my professional colleague who knows more about education than me can say, you know what, yeah, that does make sense, yeah. Now that I look at it, you know, so. Yeah, we, can easily, we, can e we can easily do it. It's not hard because it's 60 day versus 45 day. We're proposing, this is not done, but we're proposing a progress report in the middle of the 60 days. So that's, that's what it is. But, but we'll make it out, we'll put it in a chart, we'll put it together, we'll, and it will be balanced. So it will bring up the point, if you have three, each grade counts more. If you have four, 
Great. No, and nice. then I think the model, like Mark said, needs to be shared with the public. So the public has a, you know, has a, a chance to right. look at it and say, oh, yeah, we understand. You know, we, we, we kind of get this, and we, it makes sense to us. And maybe it should be handed out at a parent co teacher conference or something so that when the you know, parents come in, and, you know, whatever. We're thinking about changing. You know, could you review that or whatever? Right. I mean, I, I, and I'm not sure that we need to go to the level of a public hearing, but we could yeah. put it up on the projector in one of our meetings and then just put it out there for the public to, you know, let us know what your thoughts were on this. And, you know, anyway, we can discuss format on that, but I think that's a great idea to try and seek out public comment. I know there are some second round comments that want to be made, so I, I, I certainly have mine and I'll, I'll get to others who've indicated they have a second, you know, second round they want to do. Um, I mean, for me, you know, I think because when I asked about frequency of progress reports, the answer was obviously it has to be impact bargained and we understand that. I'd like to, to at least hear that there was some initial discussion with members of the BEA bargaining team to, to hear their initial feedback and openness to more frequent progress reports and not just when Johnny's in trouble, but in general, every child. I mean, who knows, if, if there's nothing to say, it may be, hey, your kid's doing great. You know, keep on keeping on. But um, I think we need to get a, a, a temperature on that aspect of it because that is important and I think that short of the additional progress reports I don't think this is a viable proposal personally so we need to get that piece to find out you know the, just just check the temperature with the BEA on that um, and if they're amenable and, and to it then great um, you know again you say it's not a silver bullet and then again so that brings me to well if it ain't broke why are we fixing it if it's not a silver bullet of any kind um you know and and uh, you know again i mean maybe the other conversation with the bea is too if we could do more progress reports in trimesters why can't we do more prog progress reports in semesters um you know because we could do that too and and have even more opportunities um and i know this comparison but this is where my head went is college versus we're talking k to eight and it's apples and oranges but I will tell you, when, when I was at Framingham State, I don't know if this is still what they do, but it was a four-credit system. So you only had four shots every semester. And so what was the game everybody played early on? You tried to figure out, geez, this class is going to give me a hard time. Let me protect my GPA and withdraw. And so I'm not sure how you would game that in this scenario, but I'm just thinking back to, again, every class was weighted heavier, just like three trimesters is going to be weighted heavier and you get less opportunities you know versus the normal school that you know in the college example five classes three credits right you have you know each one is weighted a little less so anyway just my thoughts personally I think that you know it would be premature for the and this is just my opinion as the chair I don't get to make motions but I think it would be premature for the committee to try and actually vote on this issue tonight I think for me to be comfortable I'd need a ton more information, like Mr. Minicello was saying, an actual model of, of, of what this might look like. I think that a decision that is this major, and I do think this is a huge decision and very vital and important and will have a huge impact, I think we need a lot more study on this and a lot more discussion and a lot more information. So um, just my thought is this is something that should be tabled for ongoing discussion. Um, but at any rate, I know um, Mrs. Mendez, you also had indicated you wanted to comment again. Yeah, I have to say I've enjoyed seeing Tom brainstorming on that paper and drawing and redrawing. What a, can I um, see the artwork? So like oh, he no, has no, models. <laughs> he has made oh, no. his own it's models, as we have been talking about, for sure. Just lines. But I have to say, <laughs> stick um, figures. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, um, Mark, um, back just to reiterate, kind of what you've said. A huge question I've had is. If progress reports are not being implemented in the semesters and we want to implement it in the trimesters, would it be worth starting to implement it in the semesters and see the impact of the change that that causes before having before making these drastic changes, right? Um, also, um, I, I guess my biggest concern is that I just feel like, I know with surveys is tricky, right? Because you give the surveys and it's optional, some people respond or not, but this is only 34% of teachers right and then my other concern is but you also spoke about that mark is 
really getting maybe family feedback and how they feel about it once we're able to show them. I know the initial meeting, we kind of showed a model. So maybe showing more in depth of that model and talking about the positive negatives and getting that feedback and seeing what parents think um, would be good to hear as well. Yeah, right. And I know I already had my second round, but the other thing too I just thought of is it makes the transition from K to eight into high school even more challenging. And we know that's a challenging, challenging transition in general. We just add another challenge now. Wait, all right, so now I don't have 60 days. I only have 45. So um, anyway, any other members of the committee want to have a second crack at it or a first crack at it if you haven't already? I want to cross-examine Mr. But Cancel a little more. <laughs> When, when, do, when can we talk He's had about, enough abuse. When can we talk about bringing back cursive? Mm. Yeah. Because these kids need to be able to sign a check and important documents and read documents. And well, if you'd like, I could. I, but I we mean, could but that, is that policy or curriculum? I don't curriculum, think it's just I would cursive. Say, right? I think curriculum? it's calligraphy. Right. Well, I just wanna, I, so I just want to put that on the table, that that's coming before. Yes. You know, we could we certainly have, have that. that as an agenda item on the next curriculum subcommittee and look at it. I, but I, I don't think it should just be cursive. I think calligraphy in general. Like, <laughs> handwriting is super important. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I judge people on the handwriting. <laughs> like, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> right? <laughs> so no, but important. seriously, you know, kids can't even write these days because everything is typed. And No, I, I you yeah, know, it's, it's... Our like, society still requires on every important document that a signature be on it. The only people that are allowed to write an X are people that are medically disabled and have the inability to be able to write their signature. Right. So when, when people, right now, you know, there's a generation of kids that are going to be able to just sort of print their names. And today, that doesn't cut it. But right. I know, see so, it on so, documents uh, in my practice at work as well. I, okay. I know what you're getting at. You sign here and it, no, you print it. But that's how they know how to write. No, the point's taken. We can certainly have that conversation under our com curriculum committee. Do we have anything else for Dr. Cancel this evening? I know we were trying to get him out of here early, sorry. I want to state for the record that I value Dr. Cancel's opinion. He does a wonderful job and he should not in any way, shape or form think that we're dumping on him. We're just doing our job and trying to make sure we do the best um, for our students Absolutely. and our system and, and he knows that. And we, and we respect him immensely. We do, Thank although you. I'm disappointed. This is the second time recently you've come with no joke. Oh, no, I, ha I have a joke. Okay, <laughs> and then we'll end with the joke. So uh, why was the cat so small? I don't know. Because it only drank condensed milk. Ah. Ta -da -da. Ah. Thank you very much. Ladies. All right. Thank you for your time and, and for the presentation. And, and thank you Mrs. Saber, you know. thank you as well. <laughs> All right. So we're going to shift. And like I said, we'll have further discussion on this matter. It won't go away. We'll vet this out and discuss it further in future meetings. Um, Agenda item number one is the review of the district calendar. Uh, Melinda has just handed that out to all of us. So if we can take uh, a peek So at this that. was um, brought to us by um, a d diversity committee, but also by the students who work with the diversity committee and actually was brought up um, by students in, when we had them with us at the, um, um, I always screw up in the, the uh, diversity, equity, diversity, inclusion, race. Am I, am I right, Cynthia? No, it's not. Yeah, um, the subcommittee. Um, and also the students brought it up to us when they were involved in the interviews for the executive director of equity, diversity, inclusion. So it's to review our district calendar um, to um, what's listed uh, to make it more inclusive uh, obviously, legal holidays are legal holidays, and uh, those things would obviously stay in place. Um, but also, just to um, not only list different things on our district calendar, but then also come up with a. Um, um, Sharon, what did you? I, I saw. Is there two of these, Melinda? A cultural calendar, correct, Sharon? That we would have separately for 
Um, so when things come up, uh, and students express this, um, that there are um, holidays that they, um, that they celebrate, and it's important for our staff to know when those are going on because um, to not assign huge projects or to assign tests when um, they're in the middle of fasting or celebrating um, the way they do in different cultures. So uh, it's something to we wanted to review. It's been brought to us, again, uh, at a di couple different committees, but also brought to us by our diversity um, committee that works with Sharon, the task force, but also with um, our students. So just was this is for discussion tonight and um, going forward, uh, district calendar, obviously the days are all set. This has been voted on, but then what we put, as you look at what goes underneath each um, of the, you know, when you see the, the days that are shaded in green and yellow and purple, um, we put an explanation underneath what those are. Uh, we obviously list legal holidays, and then, you know, it just we would look to doing a separate cultural calendar, but also listing on this main calendar, uh, so to make it more inclusive. So that was brought for discussion tonight. And Sharon, I don't know if I'm leaving anything out. Not, um, the key was to educate rather than celebrate a lot of things. Uh, and people, teachers, students have talked about uh, things that are celebrated in schools that are reflective of one particular group but not of others and the expectation that they're celebrating them and they would like to move more toward a calendar that's more inclusive, that gives people an opportunity to learn about different cultures and different events that people celebrate without uh, without them actually going through the process of trying to celebrate them in schools, but be educated about them and help to educate students about it. So that's a calendar they would like to work on, which is why you see the calendars there are um, more limited in wording. Um, at times in the past, there were certain events that might have been connected to a particular religion um, or group that was identified on a calendar that they have now uh, made some suggestions to making some shifts to some of the wording on there. Um, we looked at the calendar from the Anti-Defamation League and how they have things worded and made recommendations that way. And I think there were two teachers who were waiting um, to be part of the meeting. I told them six, so I'm sorry. I don't know if either one of them are still on there uh, to contribute to the conversation. I know one informed me she had to go. Um, but we can certainly circle back and answer any questions that you have. It's uh, Ms. Mabani, I see she's still on. I'm still here. So Audrey, I didn't know if you wanted to um, add anything in terms of the process that we used or some of the reasoning behind uh, the recommendations made. I'm sorry, Sharon, um, your sound was coming in and out. Um, you asked if I wanted to share about the process that we we did or? It is hard to hear, I'm sorry. Is this better for you, Audrey? Yes, it is, thank you. Okay, I said I didn't know if you wanted to add anything to uh, the process that the committee went through in discussing uh, some of the recommendations made or any of the reasoning that we uh, discussed in terms of those recommendations. 
calendar? Are we talking about the district calendar or the other um, cultural calendar? Both? You can start with the district calendar. Sure. So we um, often worked in the breakout rooms and we discussed the different days that we have as a holiday. As we basically were holiday based on our calendar. And I was surprised. I grew up in Brockton and we always had these things on our calendar and I just took them as this is just the way it is. Um, but it was interesting hearing from other teachers and um, different things that people celebrate and how their focus is not always just on holidays. For example, Christmas or um, Thanksgiving or uh, say Columbus Day, you know, it was uh, more that, well, why not just the time of the year? Um, for example, just the spring or the winter. So it was an interesting uh, process just to really talk about the different ways that we approach these items on the calendar. Um, I definitely want to highlight the Columbus Day, one that had a lot of discussion, um, just the origins of Columbus Day, uh, where it all came from, and just really um, more the focus. Um... Uh oh. Well, that's a cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very rich, oh, um, very exciting. As far as the cultural the cultural calendar, another very interesting thing because we have many, many Muslim students and especially they've just finished Ramadan and now they're doing, they've just celebrated Eid al-Fatiha, which is a three day celebration. And um, it's as a teacher, I work with the ESL students. Um, it's really important for me to know these things so I can teach my other students. And uh, even this year, especially, um, because I have one student who is from Pakistan, I was able to even teach about the hijab, I was able to teach about Ramadan and then Eid al-Fatir. And it really helped the student to feel really part of the class. Um, even with her headscarf, she was wearing it more and uh, people were talking to her about it. How do you wear it? What's that? You know, it's very, very interesting. And I think we just add that with all the other cultural um, recognitions is super important for our community. Um, it makes Brockton, it highlights the, the strengths of Brockton and the strengths of the students in the school system. Um, so it's just not all tilted one way. Everyone can feel included. That's all I have to say. <laughs> all right. Thank you. So, so if you have questions, I'm happy to try to answer your questions ultimately. Um, we're submitting this to you for your consideration. It's your calendar. You determine what it, what the wording is. We just wanted to give you some recommendations on how to uh, make it more inclusive of the community that we serve. So go ahead. I have a Ms. comment. Um, I love how Audrey you refer to us as the highlights, the strengths of Brockton. That wording is just very powerful and just being inclusive. I have to say, Indigenous Peoples Day, um, there's been a lot of states, I know the state of California specifically, that's moving towards more of this, um, this wording. And it has to do a lot because of um, this resource, it seems to be able to explain it more on the early history of the United States. I do have a question on this academic calendar. Are the Ramadan holidays not really, um, here because we didn't get into specifics or are they not here because that depends upon um, that depends on a yearly basis so Ramadan and other religious holidays when we talked about creating a calendar that represents cultures and religions it would be on that calendar uh, which you don't have yet because we're in the process of doing that um, so that it's it's a teaching calendar um, and everyone would have access to the information, what the holidays represent, and what students or families who are participating in those holidays um, might be experiencing. So that is a calendar that will, is in the works with the Diversity Education Steering Committee with the students involved, um, and will probably come to the DREI committee as well. Um, and we have a new executive director of equity, diversity, and inclusion that we would love to have um, as part of that work. And so that's the calendar you don't have. These are the calendars that get um, put out to the community quickly uh, for next school year. And so uh, the things that you need for people to know for next school year, those are the things that you're looking at. Okay, thank you for that clarification. 
I'm wondering when is it necessary for a decision from the committee on this? So any changes to, again, the, the, the legal holidays are set, so obviously we're not changing right. um, you know, when the holidays land or, or when vacations are taken, or obviously the Monday holiday, that's all. It's just the, we're look, looking at the wording. Um, and for the cultural calendar, it could, be, it could be done a little bit later. These usually have to be done by, I want to say, um, second week in July so we can get them printed. For the beginning of the school year, all right. For so this main one, so the, these are the these are the ones you get in like cardboard, and we right. send these out. Right. Uh, we have them all, and, and the reason it, it you know they takes long because we have them all translated to make sure um, they serve and they're in the languages that our, our families speak at home. So that takes a little bit more time. Um, cultural calendar we can do a little bit later into the summer, um, but also we we want to make sure those get printed. But those can be send out email first and, and um, right. but we, you know, this one has to be done probably second week of July. We could go a little bit later with the cultural calendar. Right. No, and I, I like the idea of the academic calendar that, um, or the teaching calendar because, again, that way teachers know, hey, this student or these students may be fasting or engaged in celebrations in the evening and like, like the point that was made, you can kind of plan around that and, and be aware and, and, you know, and consider that, um, you know, personally, again, I see that this, there's not full agreement on whether it's First Nations or Indigenous peoples, and I'd like to, you know, check this link out and kind of read that information myself a little bit, um, <clears throat> you know, on, on that one. Um, I mean, anybody have any thoughts or comments? Mrs. Sullivan. So there would be, thank you, um, Sharon. There would be two calendars. The district calendar would reflect the cultural things and the um, public school. This one would be the dates that are vacations and holidays. Right. Is, that how, is that what you're meaning is two calendars? No, um, those are the calendars that get put out by um, the school committee and the superintendent's office to inform families of days that we are off which are the two calendars that you have, or inform families when we have family in school, um, when we have those meetings that are conferences of family in school, which is the language that we're recommending instead of parent-teacher. Um, and so those are the calendars that you put out for those purposes. What we are working on creating is a calendar that really is, uh, it will go out to everyone, but it will be with the purpose of trying to support educating people on the various cultural and religious holidays that people in this community um, observe. And that's going to take us some time because we want to make sure that families have an opportunity to share some things. We are realistic in knowing that there's no possible way to know every celebration that's important to someone, but the ones that are consistent uh, with a number of people to be able to say, here's what we've learned about them, here's what you can learn about them, and here's what you can teach students about them. Um, just like Audrey was talking about uh, helping students to understand the culture of one of her Muslim students and the wearing of the hijab, for her to be able to turn that into a teachable moment um, is, is what diversity and inclusion is all about. Um, it gives them an opportunity to ask questions and learn things in a way that is really structured and meaningful. And that's what we're hoping to be able to create so we can share that with people and those opportunities will happen more often throughout our school system. Thank you. And, and I like that approach too that you talk about, about it's a teachable moment where you can, again, we've talked about this where students from, and this is one of the great things about Brockton, right? We have so many people from so many different cultures and so many different backgrounds. We really have a great opportunity to learn from each other and about each other and learn things that, you know, other places probably don't even have those discussions. I mean, it's a great opportunity. Um, so anyone else? Mrs. Mendez. Um, I have to say I love the name, a teaching cultural calendar. I know here it says just cultural calendar. I feel like the teaching is like a big, like it's just like, you know, we're all, we're all on this learning together. I think it emphasizes that for sure. I do have a question on the, um, 
this calendar, this calendar. So according to this, it says that parent conferences, at least the first one's gonna be virtual. And I wonder why would that be virtual if um, it seems like in September we're gonna be back in person? This is this year's calendar. We're just giving you an example. That oh, was this year's okay, calendar. Okay, got it, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. All right, so disregard that question. <laughs> <laughs> So this is, we're look, you're just looking at the example of what the current calendar we're using 2021. Right. Yeah. Any other thoughts? We don't have to vote on it yet, but uh, Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, I just had, I don't put Sharon on Mike, uh, March 15th. What, what is that? Oh, back in March 15th, that was the day that we negotiated with the union. It has nothing to do with the holiday. That was back when we had a, um, we, there was a day we had a trade-off um, in September. Will that be coming up again? No, that's gone. That's not, that's, that was because of, due to, that was a day we had a trade due to COVID um, that we worked on during negotiations, but that's, that doesn't exist next year. So we really can't vote on this at all? That, that's not even up to date? No, no, you've already voted on the district calendar. You've already voted on the actual days off that's that's been done when we're going to start school when the holiday you know when when the holidays fall um well like we do every year you 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 voted on all, um and melinda we can send that out again uh, that was voted on and approved i think two months ago um this is just an example of what this is what this year's looks like and whether or not we wanted to change like the wording underneath and then also present the cultural um district calendar as well right which will be a separate one so right. are we voting for changing the name of columbus state to indigenous people's day or is this just a suggestion these are the suggestions that we used right. so would we ever vote on this or how would we move forward That's up with to you. these suggestions yep. yeah at some point we would have to take yeah. a vote on this um again you know uh, personally i mean i'd like the chance to look at that yeah. information because there isn't really i mean it's right here noted there's no agreement on it um you know, yeah, so. and you'd, I mean, you'd consider, you know, Christmas vacation, would that be winter vacation? Because obviously we know that there are other things celebrated during that well, week and that. Right. And those are the two. So if I was going to bring two up in a, you know, right, December recess versus Christmas recess versus something else. I mean, you know, there are many holidays that happen in the month of December. So I completely understand why we would not want to call it Christmas recess when there are so many other holidays happening in the month of December. But we are taking a break in December because of holidays, not because it's December. Um, I don't know how the committee feels about maybe holiday break or, or something you know, like that, because that is the purpose of that break. I mean the politically correct holiday break? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just, I just love that debate. Everyone, every year it's the same debate. It's like, oh. It's that Merry Christmas, you go into a store and people get mad if you don't say Merry Christmas or people get mad if you say holiday. It's like, it's like you, you're not gonna Can't make win. everyone happy. It's just, you know, it, <laughs> well, I'm not making fun of you, Mark. I'm just out no, I'm just talking. No, but you're right. It's, yeah, the same, it's the same argument every Christmas, right. or every holiday season, whatever, it's the same. Right, but I mean. It's that circular it, argument. It's like, oh, okay. Right, I mean, I can understand the idea behind changing it from Christmas break, because that's, that's not the only holiday in December, right? You know, I mean, there are there are several others, so I can totally yeah, a see. A lot of districts change it to hollow it, holiday right. recess. Holiday recess or, you know, I, I think, I mean, personally, it's just my opinion, you know. Um, and the I other one. is wrong. I'm just, I'm just right. pointing out that's all, that's the debate every year. Right. And, and then, you know, again, we look at Thanksgiving recess versus November recess, but it's at Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know, so again, I mean, those are the only two that. I mean, other than that, I mean, I mean the, the rest of these I don't have any problems with. I'd just like to read up on Indigenous People versus Nations Day, uh, you know, um, but either one of those, you know, personally, I don't have a problem with, with that change. Um, so if I could. Yeah. Um, the November, December, uh, the committee ended up voting to go that way with it to make the recommendation to you just for consistency's sake. So then it's February, April. They decided to go by month because 
for anyone reading the calendar, it was just easier to follow that it was just identified taking a break during that month. Okay. That was the, the reasoning for the, instead of saying holiday, to say the month. Okay, understood, thank you. Um, Ms. Azak. I just have a quick question. Is there any way we can add, um, I know I brought this up last time during election season, so September, we had spoken about potentially making that pre preliminary day a remote learning day, if we can maybe add that to the calendar? I still waiting for um, the Department of Ed okay. to rule on whether we'd be able to use that um, as a um, turret towards student learning time. Okay. That could be an issue. Um, because they would then, then we would have to change the calendar and make the last day of school the 17th um, instead. Because we don't know if they're gonna be allowed, we're gonna be allowed to count yet. Okay. They haven't made a ruling on snow days um, my next for question. next year. They have, that, that was allowed this year to make, you know, obviously to stay remote um, and do a snow day and not have to make it up. They have not ruled on next year yet. So I'm hoping within the next, I'm hoping by July 1 that they'll give us a ruling on snow days and um, whether or not we're able to use a day like um, the primary for. Because that, uh, that's a good idea. I'd like to do that again. That it, would it's be. It's all about safety too. Yeah. It's just, you know, we, we have double entrances at most of our schools and, you know, during the elections, specifically September, because on November, you know, we don't have schools open that, that day, but we, you have the double entrances, it's safety, um, and just bringing a lot of people into the schools, it just doesn't make sense. So, I mean, it would be a good idea if we could do that. Um, but fingers crossed, you never know. Yep, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's still a learning, yeah, we're still learning. Um, now it's going to be, you know, just asking. We, we, we were able to do a lot during the pandemic, but now that we're slowly getting back to somewhat of a normal, um, should be interesting to see what they'll allow and not allow. Yeah. Well, then if snow days are then remote learning days, you know, then the question comes, because sometimes you, you, you just need a mental health day, right? And the snow day allows that, you know, and do, will they allow superintendents the authority to, or, or the school committee is the authority to build in a mental health day. So I think you did that. So you could you once. can you can call. Um, they still give you the full authority to make a snow day call. Okay, so we and could just you, call a snow day. Just a snow and just day. Or you could make let it you be a snow, a snow day. day. A half day instead instead right. of a full day. So okay, so we'd have some flexibility yeah, there because definitely have flexibility. You know, again, sometimes you you need a break oh, once right in a while. Um, anyway. Sorry. Any other, Mr. Rodriguez? On the uh, cultural calendar, have we identified every culture in the school district, or are we just going to go with the general based of like almost a world type calendar of what people celebrate? So that's still in progress. So um, we can identify the backgrounds of the students within the district and make sure we do our best to represent um, their cultures and traditions. However, like I said, there's, there's going to be things that we learn as we go, um, and there will be people who will feel like everything that is important to them is not reflected, which is realistic. Um, and so we are being as realistic as we can in terms of being inclusive but also acknowledging there will be things specific to people, to, to different families or different uh, groups of people that may not uh, be on the calendar. Hopefully what it will do is open the door for conversation so that what isn't there can be part of a lesson. What, what is missing, what can be added, um, and give people, get people into that space of using what is unique and, and similar about us as opportunities for kids to learn about each other and for teachers and, and school personnel to learn about the students in their buildings without feeling like they have to put on a celebration for every event. 
Um, and that way it is about teaching rather than celebrating and learning rather than celebrating. So we will need to get input from a variety of people um, to make sure that when they look at it, it is they're feeling like there are things there that represent them. Second part, is there a, has the team looked at, is there a model calendar anywhere or does anybody else have like this similar type of cultural calendar? So Just a, the Anti-Defamation League has a calendar. There are a number of calendars online that, that different universities and different organizations use. Um, and so it will be doing some research there as well. Um, and then really, this is an opportunity to pull our community members in and give them, an op give them a chance to be part of something that we're creating um, that reflects them. Great. And another thing that came to mind while I was sitting here is, you know, as we build this, this teaching calendar and these educational opportunities in the schools, I wonder, and I don't know what the mechanism for this would be, but if there was a way to also you do some education with just the public, you know, adults too. I don't know how, what mechanism we would use to do that, but I think it'd be a wonderful thing to, as adults, have the opportunities to learn about other people and cultures just like the kids are doing, you know. I, again, I have no idea what mechanism we'd use for that, but um, maybe that can be part of the conversation at some point. Uh, anything else from the committee? Mrs. Wilder, anything else? No, that's it, thank you. All right, well thank you for joining us and for all your work on this and your work with the uh, DREI committee. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, again, we can put together a draft and then Sharon can start to put together a draft of the cultural calendar. And Great, all right, if there's nothing else on this, we can move on to the next agenda item, other business. Any other business for policy, Superintendent? I don't have anything, thank you. All right, me neither. Any members of the committee have anything? Oh boy, you know what that means. I'll take a motion. Motion, motion to, adjourn. to adjourn. Second. <laughs> motion to adjourn by Mr. Minicello. A resounding second by Ms. Asak. <laughs> I will call the roll. D'Agostino is a yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Enthusiastic, yes. You got somewhere to be? <laughs> okay. Um, Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for your time tonight. <laughs>